Hello EP2150 class. This is Mr. David and I'm going to do a review for you for the final test. This is test two of two that will finish off the assessments for the final for EP2150. So EP2150 test two, the material is going to come from chapter 14, location and layout. Chapter 16, building a new venture team, bidding and tendering, and risk assessment. Those are the four PowerPoint units uh, from D2L that you're going to need to use for the test. The test is going to be opened, um, uh, put on to draw, uh, put on the D2L in Word format. You're going to download it. You're going to answer the multiple choice. You're going to answer the short answer questions. You're going to upload it to Dropbox, and the course is complete. Congratulations. So, how is this test? Uh, work. So it's 20% of your grade. Okay, it's going to be uh, seven multiple choice, three short answer questions. Okay, seven multiple choice, three short answer questions. It's not a long test. So looking at it, um, so there's going to be uh, questions on management, organizing, leadership, coordination. Uh, succession plans, uh, culture within companies, uh, financial risk, that's risk assessment, and your questions, there's going to be three questions. One question is going to be on location and layout. Another question will be uh, a risk-related question from that chapter, and another question will be on, let's see here, building a venture team. Multiple choices will be sprinkled throughout these four units. So I'm just going to go through each unit quickly. Okay, so location and layout. So this PowerPoint unit is 28 slides, so it's not long. Um, now the test is going to be open book, so read through all these slides before the test gets sent out to you. Uh, the test will be sent out to you in the next couple of days. You're going to have 48 hours to send it back to me. So it's open book. Use your own resources. Just don't copy from each other. Because when I read the tests, um, it's going to be in D2L. I'm going to see right away that you copied. Use your own words. Don't copy and paste from the slides. Write it in your own words. Okay? Show me that you understand it. This is not... Uh, a word find project. Okay, I want to see some kind of understanding. It's easy as the test is going to be. Uh, put some effort into understanding this material. So I'm going to go move through really quickly. So uh, choosing a business uh, location. So uh, what we talk about here, the best location depends on the uh, best type of business and the industry. Uh, be strategic about the advantages or disadvantages of a location. Things like how much does it cost to be at the location versus traffic. Uh, you know, if you're a wholesaler, do you even need to have any special location? We have the industrial district out at the edge of Qatar. It's not in prime real estate because it doesn't need foot traffic. There's no retail people driving by. They don't care. So think about these kinds of things, okay? Uh, how close is it to an airport? How direct is the route to an airport? Those kinds of things. Okay, there's uh, eight factors to choosing uh, a location. So know these eight factors. Uh, sorry, 16. Okay, now the right feel is more about uh, the quality of lifestyle you'll have while you're at work. But here's all the uh, uh, factors in choosing a location. Okay, so the location selection process, it, again, secondary research. If it's retail, uh, like a physical retail location, demographic location. Is your target audience in that location? Is the location growing? Uh, what's the future construction going to be in that area? Okay, the climate and weather of the area, operating costs, labor costs, all these kinds of things. Primary research, go out and observe the area uh, in person. Here's a couple sources for Qatar for planning. Okay, these are factors in choosing a specific site. Okay, so make sure you read through these. 
Retail and service businesses, location considerations. So the trade area, trade size. Uh, this is covered in a lot of detail in retail management, but trade area or trade size is if you thought of, if you had all the addresses where 80% of your customers come from, 80% of your business is probably within a two kilometer radius of where your business is located if you open a retail store. Okay, that's your trade area. Retail compatibility. Who's near you? Um, I know in Canada, uh, and probably it's smart in Qatar too, like the, or think of the gold um, souk. Okay? The gold souk is there because it attracts everybody who's looking for gold. If, if say there's 120 uh, shops in the gold souk, if they were spread all around Qatar, it would be a pain to go you know, looking for gold. But the fact that they're all in one location, it's a big draw. People will go to the gold souk to look for gold because they're all in one location. It's very convenient. Even though they're competitory to each other, together they draw more people. Okay, so competition can be good. Uh, index of retail saturation. Measure of potential sales per square foot of a store space for a particular product and in a particular trading area. Okay, um, that's not going to be on the test. Location considerations. More location considerations. Visibility. So say you are at the Gold Souk. And think of, if you're walking through the Gold Souk, the shops that are easiest to find. First off, they're on the street level. Okay, Some of them are at the junction of three different streets. They converge and there's a store. I, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a street going up and down and then another one branches off like a Y. And there's a store right in the middle. Uh, think of that, uh, compare that to a store that you have to go up through a little maze within the souk and then go into a building, go upstairs, go around a few corners, and then there's a shop. I was there just before the souk closed. There's nobody there. Okay? So think about those kinds of things. Retail and service location options. Okay? So these are the different kinds of places you can locate your business. Okay? And some basic definitions of each of those locations. Okay, so it had eight types of uh, places you can locate your business. Okay, retail and service location options. We discussed this already from the previous slides we just looked at. Near competitors inside a large uh, store, non-traditional locations, next to a museum at an airport, a university, conference facilities. These are specialized. Home-based, so your business can be a home-based. Um, it can be a mobile business, so you're going around delivering. A lot of dry cleaners pick up and deliver. They have a physical location, but nobody visits it. Okay, manufacturer locations. Usually it's all about supply chain and access to uh, roads and shipping ports um, and uh, locations. Say it would be great to have your uh, manufacturing place right next to a DHL drop-off. It would save you so much time. Okay, business incubators. So these are places that uh, help speed up the development of your business by having mentors, people who are going to help you who've been through the process before. Okay, layout, layout factors. There's some external factors. The business sign. A business sign is probably the most underappreciated uh, aspect of marketing for a business. And just look at Ikea for as an example. The bigger the sign you can make on your building, the better. And also it's important when you're negotiating a, with a landlord, how big can your sign be? If he doesn't let you make the sign as big as you want, uh, as long as it's within city regulations, I wouldn't even talk to the guy after finding that out. Okay, interiors. Layout guidelines for retailers. Uh, we're not going to do, do this. Space values for a small store. Um, that's basically the windows, the front of the store, the middle of the store, and the back of the store, uh, where you put your most important uh, products. Okay, layout, retail layout patterns, grid, freeform, and boutique. Okay, there might be a multiple choice coming from there. Types of manufacturing layouts. Uh, we won't go into this in too much detail. Let's see here. Let's break out of this. 
Oh, and that was the last slide. Okay. So manufacturing layouts. Layouts are focused on avoiding or eliminating, eliminating the seven forms of waste in manufacturing process. So transportation, the time it takes to get your goods, uh, or the time it takes to ship your goods, inventory control, motion, how people move around, waiting time uh, within the layout, overproduction, processing, and defects. Okay. So that's the slide for chapter 14. Go through this at least once so that when you get the test, you can find everything quickly. Okay. Building a new venture team. I'll just go through this very quickly. Okay. Oops. Building a new venture team. It's 34 slides. Okay. Leadership. This is important. Leadership is very important. Okay. Make sure you know leadership. Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop on the slides that I think are most important. So effective leaders. These slides are important, okay? Read everything, but what I say is important, absolutely read. Building an entrepreneurial team, these two slides are important. Some of these are about recruiting. You've already done this if you've done HR 1 and 2, or you all have done HR 1 and 2. Uh, the job analysis is here. This is stuff you've already done. Planning an effective interview, planning an effective interview, conducting an interview, checking references. Okay, about uh, managers checking candidate social uh, networking sites. This is very popular in Europe and North America. Probably less so common here because I notice uh, not a lot of people here have a LinkedIn page or their photo is uh, not very clear. Um, and you don't know exactly who that person is, but be aware that it's possible uh, if you're hiring, uh, looking for a job that your social media websites, your presence, that what people can find that you allow public it is very professional. Okay, things about company culture. Drivers of employee engagement. This could be useful. Job design strategies. This is again, this is all HR. Okay, so job design. There's not a lot of topics in this PowerPoint. Rewards and compensation. So this is basically an HR chapter. It's a review basically of HR 1 and 2. So those are the slides. Uh, make sure you know where to find the information on that for the test. Okay, so the other two. So we did 14 and 16. We'll do 18 and then we'll do bidding and tending. Rest, risk assessment. Guaranteed there's a question coming from risk assessment. Risk assessment, assessment is only 16 slides long. Okay, the definition of risk. You got to know that. Risk management. What is risk management? You got to know that. Types of financial, uh, types of risk facing a small business. These 11 types of risks. So, and then through the rest of the slides, this whole unit, basically defining the types of risks. Risk management, plan and strategy. Okay, the six steps. And then the rest of these slides, identify all your risks. Each one of these slides then is an explanation of these six steps. Okay, so that is risk management. There's not a lot going on in here, but it's important. There's guaranteed a long answer question. And then the final one, bidding and tendering. Okay, what is tendering? The process used by governments and large organizations who are looking for a service provider to complete a project or to supply a good or service. Examples, building a school. The government doesn't build a school. They hire a contractor. A group of contractors submit a bid. So what happens is the government set, creates a tender. And a tender means we need this job completed and they make it public and then companies can bid on those job specifications uh, uh, and the government will then select based on the tenders or on the applications which uh, business is going to build that school or whatever the project is. Tendering. A tender document is usually very detailed and includes details of the product 
or service required, a specific frame of time for companies to respond and the method of responding. So say the government sets the tender. Okay, now here's, a, here's an example of a tender from Qatar Gas. Three types of tenders, open tender, selective tender, negotiated tender. Selective tender is a tender that's only sent to specific companies. An open tender is open basically to all qualified bidders. Seven steps in the tender process. Okay, bidding. Suppliers respond to the tender. So once the tender becomes public, the companies bid. They make a quote how much it's going to cost them to complete this project. Okay, then evaluation of the bids and selection of uh, who should be picked. So the government sets the tender, companies bid, and then the government selects who they like the most. Okay, they notify uh, the bidders uh, who, who have won. Okay, contract awarded and signed. And then the, the work begins. And that's bidding and tendering. Okay, so these are the four units. Go through them all, read them all. You'll get your test. You'll be able to go through and find answers uh, within the slides. And that's it. And then you're finished the course. So good luck. And uh, I miss you all. I miss our class. And hopefully I see you all in the intro session. Have a great day. Bye-bye.